how does one begin to predict violence? Maybe you believe in repeat offending, maybe you like the idea of a genetic approach as a predictive strategy, or perhaps you think that violence is erratic and unpredictable. A survey in this class showed that most of you believe the latter, which is why I'm here. Through intense research on the topic, I will present the facts needed to understand the importance of scientific study in relation to violence prediction. Scientific studies, including brain scans, violent risk assessments, risk and resilience factors, and theoretical explanations all combine to explain and accurately predict future violent behavior. Risk assessments have been consistently conducted and grown in popularity of research since 1980. The call for such research stems from public concern revolving around the safety of mental illness patients stated by Sina Faisal, a professor of forensic psychiatry in the Department of Psychiatry at Oxford University, in his article, Use of Risk Assessment Instruments to Predict Violence and Antisocial Behavior in 73 Samples Involving 24,827 People, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. In the study, tests intended to predict violent offending were the most accurate out of all types of risk assessments. Other types of risk assessments includes one in, to predict sexual offending and gem, general criminal offending. Ones intended to predict violence place offenders in three categories, low risk, high risk, and moderate risk. Using these tests, 92% of offenders placed in moderate and high risk categories were accurately placed. Okay, so they're accurate, that's great, but how and why do they work? A popular and accurate risk assessment scale is the social deviance scale, or SD scale, used to predict psychopathy. This scale is characterized by general impulsivity, irresponsibility, and past criminal and antisocial behavior. Quoted from Patrick J. Canale's article titled, Do Corp Interpersonal and Effective Traits of BCLR Psychopathy Interact with Antisocial Behavior and Disinhibition to Predict Violence? Psychopathy, or antisocial personality disorder, is the greatest predictor of violence known to science. The SD scale is more predictive of psychopathy across gender, age, race, country of study, and most other risk and resilience factors, therefore being predictive of violence. Wait, stop, she said something new and fancy. Risk and resilience factors. Don't worry, that's my next point. Psychopathy is characterized by low empathy and aggression, a known fact described in Christopher P. Barlett's article using the risk and resilience approach to predict psychopathy in an emerging adult sample. In the realm of psychopathy, there are risk or predictive and resilience or protective factors that predict the likelihood of psychopathic tendencies, therefore predicting violent behavior. In an overview, risk and resilience factors are the same thing, but variants in them create the protective and predictive values. The three most prominent factors are sex, mindfulness, and identity, identity exploration. Being male ranks as a predictive factor, opposing the female gender being a protective factor. High mindfulness is characterized by Barlett as the state of being attentive to and aware of what is taking place in the present. A person who does this heavily focuses on the present rather than past or future worries. A practice shown to reduce depression and anxiety. Low mindfulness results in a high predictor score for psychopathy. Lastly, low identity exploration, especially during emerging adulthood, predicts psychopathic tendencies. Alyssa, that's a lot of sciencey words, but where's the proof? In brain scans. Kent Keel, a claim psychologist on the neuroscience of psychopathy, conducted a study described in Louis Parshley's article, Can Your Genes Make You Kill? Keel claims psychopathy is rooted in defective limbic and paralimbic cortexes. The test subjects were asked to react to pictures of moral offensiveness. And Keel's study determined that non-psychopaths will show activities in regions of empathy and emotion, while psychopaths will be processing the information in a logical portion of the brain in order to produce the correct or wanted answer. To further prove legitimacy, the legitimacy of brain scans, Russell A. Poldrack's article, Predicting Violent Behavior, What Can Neuroscience Add, must be used. Russell explains it best by saying, psychopathic behavior, including violence, 
may arise from dysfunctional within cortolimbic and cortostriatal circuitry involved in effective arousal, emotion regulation, and value-based decision-making. A study on this using structural and functional fMRI scans shows psychopathic individuals exhibit decreased amygdala and ventromedial prefrontal cortex, or VMPFC, gray matter volume, as well as lower VMPFC cortical thickness. Now all this fancy brain talk comes down to one main point. Psychopathy is rooted in defective brain activity, meaning violence correlates directly to our biology and genetics, which are both scientific studies. All right, we get it. Psychopathy predicts violence. Anything else? Yes, actually. Researchers have found a correlation between low resting heart rate, or RHR, and violent behavior. All right, psychopathy sounds legit, but low resting heart rate, a little far-fetched. Not according to Shardy A. Gowan in her article, interactions between empathy and resting heart rate in early adolescence predict violent behavior in late adolescence and early adulthood. In this article, Gallen describes two theories explaining the relation between low RHR and violence. The first theory, the fearlessness theory, is described by reduced autonomic arousal, underpinning a fearless temperament in infancy and early adult childhood. A low RHR reflects low levels of fear and anxiety, and thus a temperament characterized by a low reactivity and or arousal. Fearless children, in turn, may be less sensitive to punishment and others' attempts to help them internalize norms, which could disrupt children's fear conditioning and moral development. Have to quote, I know. In the second theory, the simulation-seeking theory, it follows the same general principle. Gallen explains antisocial individuals generally experience low autonomic arousal, causing them to seek stimulation through antisocial acts to increase their arousal to satisfactory or pleasant levels. Both theories point to the same conclusion. Low resting heart rate correlates to low autonomic arousal, which in turn correlates to antisocial behavior that is characterized by social and sexual deviance, anger, and inevitably violence. Risk assessment accuracy, violence predictor tests, risk and resilience factors, multiple studies involving brain scans, and two scientific theories have been presented to you throughout this speech. Though how to use this information in order to prevent violence is a question of morals and may be in debate in future years, little can stand up to proven fact. With countless studies performed, researchers involved, and analyses conducted, the general understanding of predicted methods is clear. Science and scientific studies can predict future violent behavior.